And here we go. Another, another episode of this. Oh boy. This is gonna be weird. Uh, um, could you please give it a rest already? The heck? I'm telling y'all, it's, it's best for y'all's sake to come clean. Oh god, these two together are gonna be terrible. The staff has their has has a lip seal shot as the reporters continue lip seal sealed shot as the reporters continue their tenacious negotiations. If you're not here to cooperate with the investigation, I must ask you to vacate the premises. Put a sock in it, copper! You couldn't even stop Mozilla's invasion! Not only that they secretly raised giant monster, but now the staff is trying to cover it up. Oh boy, that's gonna... Like I said, we haven't been raising any monsters here at the film lot. But ain't you say... But ain't you said you done this all Gordy yourself? Sure, I saw it. But it's not like we were keeping it at the film lot. Uh, mind if we butt in? No, who is this? Is this Lang? Yup, it's Lang. Wow, it's the entire gang. Ah, oh, Mr. Edgeworth! Andron! Oh, y'all come here to search for the monster too? We're searching for a criminal, not a monster! Long Shi says... The darkness inside a criminal's heart can be likened to a monster. This sounds like Kingdom Hearts. Well, when it comes to killing people, criminals aren't much different from monsters. I, Agent Lang, this is a problem. I, I can't let outsiders enter the crime scene. These are all key figures in the case. I like, I'd like them to be here when, when the investigation resumes. Yeah, Kaiju weirdly didn't fit in those mentions of monster. Agent Lang, regarding what you said about the about resuming the investigation, where do you intend to start? Let's stop by reviewing the case. Today, the body of President Huang was found here at the film lot. The president's whereabouts from two nights ago are still unknown. It seems he snuck out from under the eye of, the, of his bodyguards and ventured outside. And that night was the last time he was seen alive. Yeah, it's been today since Case 4 started. <laughs> it was when he met with you, Judge Courtney, on the roof of the Grand Tower. Oh god, John, what did you... Is this milk sweating? So, why did you meet with the president? That... I cannot say. You can't tell us. Even You can't tell us, even under suspicion of murder. Can't say. Why not? Miss Courtney, if you don't say anything, you'll only be more suspicious. Ha! Huh. She must have a reason to clam up. I think you're somehow involved in the president's assassination. Objection. The president's body was only discovered today. That still leaves a blank of, of one day after Judge Courtney met with, with him, unaccounted for. Don't be so impatient. We gotta fill in that blank right here, right now. The evening on that blank day in question is what's important. What happened that here last night? So, why do you, why don't you tell us, John Marsh? <laughs> Me? We know you were here last night. What? John was here? Between that little missy's testimony and the footprints we found, we could easily prove that. John, you were rehearsing here last night, right? God damn it, Penny. Who's spying on me? 
I feel like his voice is so bad now that we know that he's like the child of a, of someone we know deeply. Uh um, I'm sorry. I just came to check up on things. You really shouldn't be staying up so late, you know. Mind your business. What the? John Marsh, that young lady was worried about you. Oh my god. Full mom mode. You will not speak to her like that. Sorry. How many times have I told you to be more mindful of the way you speak? Is it me or does Miss Courtney's personality seem kind of different? She seems to be as strict with her own son as she is with those who violate the law. Are you listening to me? And earlier as well. Wow. You should always bear that in mind, no matter the occasion. God damn it, Lang. Can we get on with the investigation already? Uh, pardon me. For Judge Courtney to get carried away like that. This must be a motherly side. Agent Lang, do you suspect John? <laughs> All I want is the truth. Why was the president killed? And I want to know who killed him. I'll do whatever it takes to find out. It seems the president was like family to him. John, would it be alright if we asked you a few questions? Sure. It's fine. I've got nothing to hide anyway. Except that you are definitely not 13. I wasn't feeling too great during yesterday's shoot, so I made a few bloopers. They're reshooting the scene today, so... Well, I decided to rehearse it on my own, that's all. I do it all the time, there wasn't anything out of the ordinary. You were rehearsing alone that late at night. John, when I called you last night, you told me you were at the hotel. You called him? About what time was that? I believe it was around 11 p.m. I require him to call me every night. That's our rule whenever he stays away from home. The truth is, I was in the film lot during that time. Oh, she mad. Oh, she mad. So you lied to me. I I'm sorry. Miss Courtney sure is angry. I think it's admirable that he practiced even on his own, even he hit, even if he hid it from his mom. I'm sure she was simply worried. Who knows? Who knows what could have happened to him out alone so late at night? And in reality, he did get caught up in yesterday's incident. But John said there wasn't anything out of the ordinary, right? Is that really the truth? I wasn't feeling so great during yesterday's shoot, so I made a few bloopers. John, you said you didn't feel well. Could you tell me more concretely what was wrong? I drank really bad milk. It doesn't matter. I just wasn't feeling well, alright? You weren't feeling well? Maybe you drank too much milk. What? How do you... Uh, no, I mean, that's not it. Oh my god. I swear, if it turns out somehow that this kid is lactose intolerant. So he didn't feel well because of his stomach. When I was young, I was told that chewing milk makes it easier on your stomach, you know. Chewing milk? What? Th this conversation is over. Anyways, I made a few bloopers. What the fuck is chewing milk? They're reshooting the scene today, so... So they plan to reshoot the scene today. And you were practicing for that last night. My mistake caused a lot of trouble for the, for, for the people around me. 
I'm fro, so practicing that much that much more is natural. Hmm. You certainly just have an admirable sense of responsibility. John is incredibly dedicated to his craft. He didn't even make any major mistakes in those bloopers. But he said it would make the movie just a tiny bit better. Shut up. You don't need to go blab around blabbering about stupid stuff like that. Uh, I'm sorry. If only it was a little more cooperative, I'd have no complaints. Huh. Anyway, this is what happened. Well, I decided to rehearse a little on my own, that's all. John, about your testimony just now. John Marsh, don't I always tell you? If you're going to practice by yourself, you have to let me know beforehand. I, I, I know. My time to speak was completely stolen away from me. I shall ask you once more, John, about your testimony just now. But you know, John, I think that's really great. <laughs> oh my god, this is the worst press. Hmm, <laughs> again? I bet putting it in an honest effort like that will make someone even more will make someone even more talented. You go from a little thief to a middle thief, and then someday you'll become a great thief. I'll be doing my best, so you do your best too, okay, John? Uh huh. Now then, if I may, John, do you often rehearse in that way? At last, at long last, I finally got to ask my question. I do it all the time, there wasn't anything out of the ordinary. Okay, let's press that too. There are no mistakes in the testimony, correct? Ah, uh, of course there's no mistakes. It was just a normal peaceful night. Nothing out of the ordinary happened at all. Uh, a peaceful night? How can you say that when an incident like this had occurred? Okay, he's still a child. Please don't get seriously angry. So there was nothing out of the ordinary. He doesn't know anything about that at all about that incident. That's the impression I get. I'm getting. But isn't there evidence that shows everything did happen last night? Yes. I don't have time to waste dealing with child's lies. Let's present the contradiction. Okay. Let's see. There wasn't anything out of the ordinary. Monsters footprints. Biatch. There wasn't <laughs> There wasn't anything out of the ordinary. That's a lie, isn't it? We have evidence right here. Ah, uh, could that be? That's right. It's the video you recorded of your performance. Oh, well good thing this was one of the things where I get to choose two things. Uh, what? You telling me you have video from last night? Exactly. And in this video, there is clearly something that is out of the ordinary. This is a kaiju's footprint! Would you say that kaiju's footprints are commonplace on a film set? Well, I wouldn't say they're surprising if they're actually a prop, which this one isn't. So that's a problem. John, why did you conceal this video from us? No, it isn't really. Hey, pup! This is no joking matter! You had a reason to hide it, right? John Marsh, answer him clearly! But, ma'am... Well? I didn't want anyone to see me rehearsing. Why? In other words, you're embarrassed about others seeing your practice. This fucking kid. Yeah, got a problem with that? You're saying that's why you hit the evidence? John! Yeah, yeah. I love, I love that damage, that damage animation, it's great. Quit nagging me. You've already busted me, what more do you want? Yeah, the footprints were there. But I just practiced and he had it home. 
How come you're so calm after finding those footprints? It's a, it's a kaiju, you know. A real life kaiju. I thought it was just a part of the set. Yeah, I mean, that's that just makes sense. Besides, there's lots of other st weird stuff around here, too. Hey, suspicious, Chief! This guy's really suspicious! I swear, if we somehow get Nicole and, um, and Delisha in the same room, I'm going to die. Because they also have the exact same voice. We get Delisha, Nicole, and Larry, and I'm gonna fucking quit. <laughs> All three of them in the same scene. You're right! The smell of a scoop stinks to high heaven! Shut up! We're done talking! Objection! We're not done here yet. What now? The Kaiju's footprints weren't the only unusual thing that happened last night. Besides the monster's footprints, what other unusual thing happened last night? <laughs> Why are you asking me? Uh, I was talking to myself. That's weird! Uh, okay. <laughs> Wait, that's two nights ago. What weird thing happened last night? Last night... Uh... Okay, I'm kinda stumped right now, but I should... I probably can do this. Oh, last night it fell from the studio roof, so that happened last night. I thought it wasn't clear when that happened. A monster... A kaiju's head fell from the roof of that building. Surely you must have known about that. I don't know anything about it. Is that true? I told you, I just practiced a bit and then I went back. I don't know anything about Muzilla's head falling off or anything like that. Or do you have evidence to show that I know something? There certainly isn't any evidence of that. It's also possible that it fell after John had already gone back. If there's no evidence, then like I said, we're done talking. It seems that John doesn't really want to talk about last night. Could he be hiding something after all? Where the fuck is Phoenix in times like these? I need his, like, voodoo powers or something. Wait up! Agent Lang. <laughs> it's as I thought. Thank you, Mr. Prosecutor. This video backs up my logic. Huh? Is there something in the videos that's related to the case? Yeah, take a good hard look at the mo at the kaiju costume in the top left. Okay. The Mozilla costume? Try comparing it with the one over there right now. Hmm. Huh. It looks like it's just hanging there limply limply though. And the zipper on its back is zipped up tightly. Uh this is gonna be fucking weird. Zipper on its back. What? This discrepancy discrepancy is Yeah, the difference is plain to see. In the video the zipper is clearly open. Who wore that? That's right, someone was inside. No no, it's only small monsters, not kaiju. Kaiju are real. What? Mr. Powers, is the costume zipper usually... It's always zipped up tightly when it's not in use. Mr. Prosecutor, do you remember? My, log 
my logic from before. Two nights ago, Courtney pushed the president off the roof and killed him. Afterwards, she snuck into the film lot to hide the body. Oh my god, is he implying that the president, who I still think is not dead, I think this is a body double, was in the fucking costume. In here. Wouldn't it be easy to hide a body in a costume or behind all this equipment? Then all she had to do last night was retrieve the body. You're saying the body was hidden inside the costume. Yeah, that's right. Judge Courtney, two nights ago you pushed the president off the roof of the tower. And then hid the body inside the monster, the kaiju costume. I, I didn't know such thing. Say what you want, but you're the only one who could have done it. That should have already been proven impossible. The film lot was locked at the time. Oh my god, no, no, sh now she's connected to the crew, god damn it! She probably knows the fucking thing. Shit! God damn it! Judge Courtney could not have entered this place. And what if there was an accomplice? Okay, that was not the logic I was following, but sure. What? I'll tell you my reasoning, so listen up. When the president was pushed off the roof, John was waiting at the film lot. Oh boy. If John was an accomplice, the problem with the locks would be resolved. The two of them then hid the president's body inside that kaiju costume over there. You think this crime had such an elaborate plan? To take the life of a nation's president. An elaborate plan is to be expected, don't you think? Counterpoint! I didn't do it! <laughs> John would never take part in such a crime! You're the one being suspected. Your words don't carry much weight. I wouldn't think the, those two had sufficient motive for something like this, though. Well, maybe they had a motive that we didn't know about. You were the last one to meet with the president, and you're still keeping the details secret. Don't you think it's only natural that you're being suspected? Judge Courtney, is there no way for you to tell us your secret? My apologies, I just cannot, no matter what. What the fuck? That's... that's... somehow it's gotta be connected to that fucking kidnapper. However, when the time I can, when the time I can talk about it comes, I will surely let you know. So, if you could please. Believe you? Is that what you wanted to say? That's what all criminals say. See, the funny thing is, I'm thinking it's the president and this is a body double, and you're saying the president is also John's dad. And you, pop. If you've got any ex if you've got an explanation, hurry up and spit it out. Heh, <laughs> I didn't do nothing. That's all I'm saying. Both mother and son won't talk. You still got you still gonna defend him like this? It's true, Judge Courtney's actions are a mystery. However, we still don't know whether or not that ties in with a motive of murder. Yeah, that's right. The motive for murder can we. For now, let's talk about the situation surrounding the crime. And the fact that these two are the only ones who could have done it. Can we get some Little Thief action? I feel like that would probably clear some stuff up. When the president was pushed off the roof, John was waiting at the film lot. I find that unlikely. Agent Lang, don't tell me you're saying John was an accomplice. John still looks like a great school kid. He's even got a kitty backpack to boot. How can how could he be an accomplice? That's just no way. Like I said, John's already in middle school, and the backpack is part of his costume. I wonder if you could just do this entire game acting like everyone is just super angry. 
because everything that seems genuine you can just make sarcastic. Long Chi says, Fuck you! No matter how young they come, never pity an ungrateful pup. He may be a little brat, but the villain deserves no mercy. Ah, uh, so Mr. Lang Shi didn't make any allowances for age? Mr. Prosecutor, you're not just defending him because he's a pup, are you? Hmm, of course. That was never my intention. I shall present suitable evidence in due course. I wish you wouldn't call him a pup, but more a calf, because he's a cow. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. My logic's just getting started. If John was an accomplice, the problem with the locks would be resolved. <laughs> How would that resolve the problem? I figured you'd ask that. Mr. Prosecutor, uh, I figured you asked that, Mr. Prosecutor, but you know, it's actually quite simple. Listen up. First, that woman pushes the president off the roof. Hmm, <sighs> she pushes him off. Then, that brat, who knew the combination for the lock, unlocks the film lock. I see, the combination unlocks the brat. Okay, it's the opposite. What? That's all it takes. With this, the problem of the lock is solved. Your theory that she couldn't be in, that she couldn't get in because she didn't know the combination, long, no longer flies. Hmm. Regarding the lock, that certainly is a plausible explanation. Agent Lang, thank you for your clear explanation. Please continue with what you were saying before. Hmm. Huh. If you're gonna give up, you better do it now. The two of them hit the president's body. Supposing those two were accomplices. Or accomplices? I don't know. Why would they have needed to leave the body hanging there for an entire day? To age the meat! Why did you give it a rest and take a good hard look at reality? Thanks to their trickery, our investigation has been confused up until now. Doesn't that about answer your questions? Got it? Those two hit the body. Inside that kaiju costume over there. In the video, we cannot see the inside of that costume. So can you really say for certain that the body was placed inside? Yeah, I'll give you that i give you that much. In that case, why don't we try to examine it? The inside of that costume. There might be some traces left inside. Mr. Powers, may we examine the inside of the costume? Uh, sure, I'll go ahead. But it might be kind of stinky, since I sweat a lot in there. And possibly because a dead body was in there and that is very bad. What the fuck? Oh, oh god, that's debris. Oh shit, that's debris. This is incredibly dirty. That's strange. We always make sure to clean it after using it, so that the sweat doesn't damage the costume. Isn't this just proof that someone besides you used this costume? I'd say that dirt from the body probably got into the costume. The president's body did fall on top of the monster's footprint. Of the kaiju's footprint. That might... That must be where the dirt came from. That must be where the dirt came from. Are you satisfied now? There's, there's dirt inside the costume. It must have gotten there when the body was hidden inside. Okay, let's press that again. So, dirt got inside into the costume when the body was hidden. Wouldn't that mean when the body was hidden inside? Wouldn't that mean that the dirt was transferred from the body? Ha! Huh, isn't that obvious? Isn't that obvious? How else would you say it got there? This dirt stuck everywhere inside the costume. It looks pre particularly bad around the chest area. Dirt around the chest. We cannot overlook this fact. Mr. Lang's logic does seem to make sense. Indeed, if those two were accomplices, accomplices, I don't know, a crime certainly would have been possible. So it would be a useless to argue that point. In that case, what should we do? Firstly, we should have Agent Lang explain his reasoning in more detail. Let's draw out more information. Yet more?
But I already looked at everything. Okay, let's see if there's anything new. Usually, like, endings like that hinder hint that you still have to look for something. All things considered, I'll probably need to, uh, I'll probably still be here. Okay, there's not more to get out, so I'm gonna guess it's probably the new line. Objection. Or not. <laughs> or I don't take long. Dirk got onto the costume when the body was hidden inside. Is that really the case? You have a problem with that? There's a fair amount of dirt inside the front of the costume. Yeah, that is a lot. Wait. Yeah, that is a lot of dirt. However, I would like you to focus on the state the body is in. It's lying on top of the dirt, and yet there's no dirt in the front on the front of the body. If the body really was inside the costume, then it's strange that the front of the body isn't stained more with more dirt. Uh, well then, how would you explain it? How would you explain it? How did the dirt get inside the costume? From the video footage, it's very likely that someone was inside the costume. But just who could it have been? Hmm, where have I seen this? What's the matter, Kay? I just feel like I remember seeing something that looked like this dirt somewhere before. Why, where was it? There were these bits of grey fragments mixed in with the dirt. Grey fragments? There does seem to be something other than the normal dirt mixed into it. Something, something must have gotten stuck to it, and lots of it I might add. Hmm. Something's got stuck to it. This may merit a closer look. Where did we see dirt that looks like what's stuck on the inside of the costume? Okay, not that. Um. Okay, let's see. Where did we see the dirt? I mean, the crime scene, but nope. Where the fuck?
Oh, what the shit? The gloves? What? This dirt has some gray bits mixed into it. Huh? And what of it? We found an item belonging to a certain man that was covered in the same type of dirt. That is to say, these gloves. Those dirt stains certainly look the same, but tell me, just what exactly is this gray substance? This gray substance is... Uh... I would say concrete. Yeah. This gray substance must be fragments of concrete. You mean, the stuff that was scattered around the monster's footprints? Exactly. Meanwhile, who do these gloves which are stained with the same kind of dirt belong to? Oh, I remember! We found it at Blaze's place! Earlier today, we went to Blaze's garage. There, we discovered these dirt-stained gloves. Come to think of it, there were also hammers, shovels and other tools placed inside as well. Why would a mechanic's gloves intended to be used on machines be covered in dirt? If he broke the concrete with, a, with the hammer, and then dug into the, so the soil with the shovel, then it's only natural for dirt th like that to get on the gloves. Then maybe... Yes, the true nature of the, of the Kaiju's footprints has been made clear. It's possible that these footprints were dug up by Blaze the Best himself. It's possible. Huh. It's possible, you say? Please do enlighten me. Because I honestly have no clue why on earth would he... Why on earth would he do something like that? Why did he make the monster footprint? The kaiju footprints? Thinking about it, the answer must be... Uh, what you missed is... We found the dirt in the costume again. Notice that it looks exactly like the dirt on Blaze's gloves. And are now and we're now saying that Blaze actually dug the footprints. Yeah, that's basically everything. Could it have been because he buried something? He buried something? I smell treasure. So what did he bury? If we want to find that out, we'll have to dig it up ourselves. Okay, yeah, this is false. You think the police wouldn't have already already investigated that? There was absolutely nothing buried beneath those footprints. Ugh, it seems that I was wrong. In that case, we should assume the opposite. He dug something up. Okay, at least this game isn't making me choose the other option. It probably went something like this. Last night at this spot, there was something that Blaze needed to dig up. Hold on. Yeah, no, this is all off. Kinda weird. Uh, there was something that Blaze needed to dig up. For that reason, he broke the lock on the back door and snuck... Sneaked. I thought it was snuck. Snuck into the film lot. Using the hammer and shovel, he set to work. Did you hear the thing? I I uh, summarized what you missed, by the way, in case... Did you hear that? He placed the items he dug up into his bag, but before he could fill in the holes... Ah, that's why John came to practice! Exactly! Blaze panicked and had no choice but to hide himself in the Mozilla costume near nearby. Okay, good. Ugh. To think you would deduce so much from just a pair of dirt-stained gloves! However, all this is merely a possibility. There's still no proof that he would that he was the one who was hiding inside the costume. For all we know, he might have left the scene once he finished digging. On the contrary, such proof does exist and can be seen in the video. When this video was recorded, Blaze was definitely inside the film lot. What? Though I can't blame Agent Langford of noticing. The difference between the current film lot 
and the one in John's video, along with the state of Blaze's garage, it's all too clear that Blaze was still here. What proves that Blaze was still at the film lot when this video was recorded? Good question. Uh, what does prove that? Is it this bag? It is the bag, apparently. This bag placed near the costume. There was an identical one inside Blaze's garage. Oh, I didn't notice that. First, the dirt on the gloves, and now the bag. It seems there is a connection. And that's my proof. Blaze was inside the costume. Ergo, the president's body could not have been hidden inside it. Hey Hiya! It seems I was able to refute Agent Lang's reasoning. Someone needs to go investigate Blaze's house right away, pal! We need to know what was inside the bag! Yes, sir! Who is holding it now? Oh god damn it, Lotta, can you just leave? Y'all pop down and listen up. Y'all just happens. Y'all just been saying whatever works best for y'all. And the noisy one returns. That there's a footprint of the mighty Muzilla. They ain't some random holes dug up by that old coot. Hmm. I believe the true nature of these footprints has already been proven quite logically. Logic schmozzy, I ain't buying it. Say what you want, but I, but I know what I saw, and I saw Muzilla. Yeah, what did she see? What the fuck is that? Is she referring to how she saw Muzilla out the window of the Grand Tower? Preposterous. A part of journalist's souls! We ain't having none of it! That statement is an insult to journalists everywhere. Ah, that's right! There's more to them... There's more to them kaijus than ju just those footprints. I remember hearing that Sonny over over there was seen with the monster earlier. Okay, now we have to prove that this isn't Gordy, which is going to be the easiest shit ever. I reckon that girl over there said she witnessed it herself. You know, it's really weird because this is Nicole, and then we have Penny Nicoles. Nicoles? And, uh... When these two are together, all meaningful talk grinds to a halt. If we only just... If we only knew just what the kaiju really was, I think those two would quiet down. Mr. Edgeworth, isn't there anything you can do? The kaiju's true identity. We don't have much choice. Let's see what we can do. Isn't there something y'all ain't telling us about the kaiju? Nicole, ask him. Ask him right now. Please settle down. Regarding the true identity of that kaiju, I already know what it is. What did you say? That's right. The video John recorded provided the hint that I needed. What you talking about? It's the... it's the camera crane. It's the camera crane with... with a blanket over it. Miss Nicole saw Gordy. Or Nichols, I don't know. When she went to check up on John's practice. At that time, she mistook something for Gordy. The monster can be seen in this photograph. The kaiju can be seen in this photograph. What? Ain't that just some old plain old souvenir photo? Y'all don't really think you can pull the wool over the eyes of a pro like me, do ya? What does Miss Nichols really see when she mistook for that she mistook for Gordy? Take that. Penny ain't smart, but she's very angry. Naturally, Gordy's true identity was 
this camera crane But what? The video John recorded was shot from fairly up high. A shot from this position would be impossible without a camera crane. <laughs> but there ain't no way Miss Nichols won't mistake a camera crane for Gordy! I wonder about that. Miss Nichols? Yes! Earlier, you said the prescription for your glasses didn't match your eyesight anymore, correct? Oh, okay, so she isn't dumb. She just can't see. Sorry. Yes, lately it seems like my eyesight has suddenly gotten a lot worse. So would you say that you weren't able to see Gordy very clearly in the dark? That's right. Its, silhou it's silhouette is all I could make of it. Is all I could make out. But remember what Miss Nichols said? And I quote, Its skin was really scary, almost like a reptile. Camera cranes ain't got no flesh on them, let alone skin. It's just a bare steel frame. That is certainly true. At least in the case of this photo. However, last night it did have skin. What the fuck are you talking about? Y'all just doing whatever you can to get in the way of a big scoop, ain't ya? That was not my intention, but it's a very nice side effect. <laughs> but since I've come this far, it's time to put an end to your nonsense. Gordy's skin is right before our very eyes. This is the skin of Gordy that Miss Nichols saw. Boop. There you go. Zip soup zippity boop. As Miss Nichols stated in her testimony earlier, it looked like it was going to rain last night. Well, it never actually rained. John still covered the camera crane with a rainproof sheet, which to Miss Nichols looked like a monstrous skin. What? You gotta be kidding me! Isn't that right, John? Man, you saw through it all. Not bad, old man. Then why didn't you tell us, you shit kid? Unfortunately, the Gordy that Miss Nichols saw was nothing more than an illusion. Not again. Looks like my dream has shriveled up and died once again. Mentor! Are these two gone now, please? Seems like things have finally settled down. I really thought the ball was hiding something from me. Guess I had it all wrong. Okay, but what was the I? Why are you not... <laughs> like, why are you not talking about the I now? We still haven't said what that... what the fuck that was. Now that we figured out the true form of the kaiju, everything's... everyone seems refreshed. Actually, there's two people here who are totally bummed out. Agent Lang. The report is in, sir. We've got the results of President Huang's autopsy. But Bisho, Tessa's eye is fine. Good, show it to me. Contusion... Contusions, I'm gonna guess, and bone fractures found across the body, resulting from tremendous pressure. So, this was the cause of death. In other words, he was crushed to death. Is being crushed to death the same thing as falling from a great height? I'm honestly not sure. I thought as much. <laughs> the yellow stain on his chest is currently under investigation, but it seems that gunpowder residue was found on his right hand. Did he catch a bullet? S Sunflower residue? I didn't know the president was into gardening. No gunpowder residue. Traces of it are left behind when a gun is fired. Since it has been found on his right hand, it's possible that the president fired a gun. 
or caught a bullet that just came out of one. Wouldn't that be fucking metal, wouldn't you say? A gun, huh? But we didn't find any guns when, the inve when we investigated this area. Unexplained gunpowder residue. I'll have to look over the autopsy report later. No then, Agent Lang. It seems we have our answer. The president did not die from falling off the roof of the Grand Tower. <laughs> Rather, he died from being crushed under a meme. Boozilla's head. I can't deny it. Looks like your logic was right after all. This means the suspicions surrounding Miss Courtney should be cleared up, right? Yes. Not only the cause of death, but the time of death proves her innocence as well. Judge Courtney met with the president two nights ago. However, according to the autopsy report, the time of death was around 11 p.m. last night. Mozilla's head also fell last night. It matches up perfectly. That's a relief. Isn't it a bit too early to be relieved? Cause I'm gonna pull something out of my ass to still indict fucking Judge Courtney, and you're gonna be, and you're gonna be really surprised when I do. Agent Lang? The president died after being crushed by the Mozilla head, that I will admit. But the problem is, who was responsible for the falling head? Blaze. I mean, it's so obvious that it's Blaze. He set the rooftop on fire. And somehow the president was down there. I don't know that yet, but it was Blaze. It was so obviously Blaze. Mozilla's head fell last night, and last night the one who was at the film lot was... Blaze! It was Blaze who was at the film lot! John too, but also Blaze! What are you saying? Surely you're not implying... <laughs> yes! That's right! You killed him, didn't you? John Marsh! You know, I always forget that both Big and Blaze are cats, because what the fuck is Big? That pup is hiding something. He was at, at the scene where the body was discovered last night. He also saw the footprints. And despite that, he still claims to know absolutely nothing about the incident. Well, yeah, that is true. Yeah. Except... Except Blaze was there way earlier so that he could set fire. So that's why he wouldn't know anything. Something in to that extent, I'm gonna guess. Isn't that a bit too convenient? These footprint-shaped holes have not been proven to be related to the case. Just, be just because he saw the holes doesn't necessarily mean that he he's involved in the incident. You sure about that? Take a look at the pup's face. Moo. He looks pretty shaken up to me. It looks like he hit the mark, but John doesn't want to talk about it. Where is Phoenix? Fucking goddamn it! If he doesn't feel like talking, then I have an idea of my own. Let's check the tape. Agent Lang, what is your intention? The police have a device that lets you analyze the video footage up close and personal. Enhance that image! Well, to be fair, this is a film set, so everything's probably shot in like 4K at least. And lossless. Agent Lang, you would suspect John enough to go that far? As long as John's lips are sealed, this may be the only way for us to get closer to the truth. Fuck, Suppo. Oh yeah, I actually did have a theory right now. Uh, Blaze did everything. That's my theory right now. Like, he's currently saying John did it, but no, it was Blaze. He set the fire to the to the rooftop so that the head fell down somehow on the present. I don't know what that happened yet. And that's probably also how John does know because the fire took a bit. That's my current theory. Detective Gumshoe, if I'm not mistaken, you have that device with you, correct? 
Mr. Analysis is ready to go, sir. Oh yeah, and my theory about the president still stands that he's a body double, the president isn't actually dead, and he probably kidnapped John. Now we're talking! Prosecutor Edgeworth, would you please perform the video analysis for us? She wants me to do it. Who knows what kind of faults that wolfman will find in it. That wolf fox headshot man. This isn't exactly my strong suit, but I suppose I have no choice. Are there any new clues shown in that video? Uh, I guess this time we don't... Okay, that didn't look like anything. No. <laughs> Why is that so hilarious? Why is that so fucking hilarious? This is... <sighs> What's the matter? I want to see too! Huh? Eek! Hey! What's wrong? Show it to me! Prosecutor Edgeworth, I request you submit the evidence to the court! What court? Me. Please take a look at the top right corner of this zoomed in video. Th this... This person is... The President! Impossible! Huh? N no way. It seems we've finally found out at last. Found it at last. The evidence that points to the true killer. This video places John at a major disadvantage. Y you're wrong. That's not right. I didn't know anything about this. That's not gonna cut it. It's clear that you and the victim were together at the same place where his body was last was later found. John Marsh. There's no doubt. You killed the president. No, this can't be. Why? Why would you? Really? Really, Courtney? Are you actually thinking your son did it? John, please don't tell me. Did you really kill the president? Courtney, come on! He's your son! Wow! Mr. Edgeworth, is this really decisive evidence? Mr. Prosecutor, looks like even you can't object to this. <sighs> she has to be impartial, even to her own son. That pup said he didn't know anything, right? And yet the president's here right in the video. My theory is that John is just stupid and doesn't know what he should reveal or not. John, what are you hiding? John, please tell us the truth. The truth is... The truth is... It's all my fault. Oh. <laughs> we need some seances right here. John Marsh, what did you do? Mozilla's head falling was my fault. Okay. It was somehow still blaze though. While I was setting up the equipment on the roof, I used the heater. After that, I went down to practice, but I forgot to turn it off. Then my mom called me, so I left the film lot. When I came back to the lot after the phone call was over, Mozilla's head wa that wa was on the roof had fallen, and right next to it was the president, lying dead on the ground. Okay, yeah, you think you did it, but you didn't. How can that be? I see. There were indeed traces that something had caught on fire on the rooftop. It was just a small fire, so I was able to put it out by myself. So, the president's death was John's fault? But... Wouldn't that make this an accident, sir? And then what did you do with the fallen head? It took it apart. 
brought the pieces of back up to the roof and put it back together. Oh god damn it, John. You Oh god damn it, you tampered with evidence. Ugh. So you put out the fire and and even put the fallen head back on the roof. Which means you were hiding evidence. We can't be having that, you naughty little pup. God damn it, John. I didn't do it on purpose. I really did just forget to turn off the heater. I don't know what that means. Sh shizzle. When the legs broke, the stand would have tilted. If Mozilla's head was on top of the stand... It would have fallen off, so the head fell down because of the fire. Yes, if that and if that's the case, I also have a pretty good idea what caused the fire. There's a flammable can next to the heater. It seems someone is lacking a safety awareness. Was it really just an accident? If that's the truth... Oh, super high school level. Uh, yeah. If that's the truth, then what was the president doing here? I don't know. There was no one else around when I was there. You expect me to believe that? The president wouldn't have... Wouldn't have just come to a place like this without a reason, you know? They changed that into ultimate, but they kept blackened. Good work, Danganronpa. Indeed, the president's reason for coming here is still a huge mystery. Two nights ago, he met with Judge Courtney on the roof of the Grand Tower. And last night, he was here at the film lot. Did he meet with John? I'll have to listen to John's testimony very carefully. While I was setting up the equipment on the roof, I used the heater. John, you are still young. You have so much in you have so much left to live for. Don't do this. Um He said that he used the heater. Basically every everything that is happening now is in this piece of piece of rebuttal. I know it can get a little cold in the... Sorry, I'm eating. <laughs> I know it can get a little cold in the early spring, but you shouldn't have to resort to a heater. Precisely because he is young that he must make sure to take good care of himself. Attention. However, while it, while it can get a bit chilly during this time of year, I wouldn't necessarily say, Man, this salami is good. <laughs> Hold it, old man. Is this really the right, the right time to be having this argument? G uh, he's completely right. John, you did well to get the better of Mr. Edgeworth, but please, find your language. Let's not forget that he was... that he got the better of you too, Your Honor. <laughs> I know, ma'am. So, um, where was I? After that, I went down to practice, but I forgot to turn it off. You forgot to turn off the heater. You didn't check it before leaving the roof. I meant to turn it off, but I was too focused on practicing, so... <laughs> And come on, everyone forgets stuff like that sometimes. Yeah, I gotcha. I forget small things like that all the time too. Like sometimes I'll forget to turn off the AC or the lights in Mr. H was office. How often have you been in his office? We've known each other for like three weeks. Or I'll jump off the ladder for 
for his bookshelves. Early prank calls in on his answering machine. But forgetting to turn off the heater is really dangerous, so you've got to be careful. Some of those things had nothing to do with forgetfulness. John, please continue. Well, that was more like a day, right? Looks like we got him back too, old man. Whoop. Well, back to my story. And then my mom called me, so I left the film lot. It was late at night at the film lot, and not a single member of the film crew was around. So then, why did you have the have to leave the premises in order to answer a phone call? I, to I totally forget about the phone call. Forgot about the phone call thing, so I panicked. If I didn't answer it fast, it would have been but I would have been busted, but busted for leaving the hotel without permission. In that case, why didn't you just answer it here? Because I was rehearsing, other cameras and mics were on. If I talked here, every last word I said to mom would have been caught on camera. <laughs> this little shit. So he was embarrassed by the conversation that the conversation with his mother would be recorded. Anyways, I stopped practicing for a bit and rushed out of the film lot. <laughs> when I came back to the lot after the phone call was over... <laughs> in that phone call, you lied and said you were at the hotel, correct? Why didn't you tell your mom that you were rehearsing? <laughs> if I told her that, she would have got the hotel and made them send me a taxi or something. Of course I would have. A child alone on the streets at that time of night. <laughs> the angry woman, but so I love it. <laughs> what sort of parent would allow their child to be in such a dangerous situation? I would guess Blaze and um, Gustavio. I guess kids just don't understand how their parents feel. It goes both ways, Mr. Edgeworth. Indeed. Now then, John. Please tell us about what happened after the phone call. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. When the call was finished, I came and I came back here. Woozilla's head was on the... That was on the roof had fallen. Was there any indication that the head was about to fall? I... I don't know. I was focused on my rehearsal. So you forgot to turn off the heater which led to a fire on the roof. I would think you should have at least hurt something. Hurt something? Oh, I was wearing headphones, so... Are those headphones? Are the horns headphones? Headphones. Listening to the movie soundtrack helps me get into the scene. Air in full blast, that's why I didn't hear anything. <laughs> Fucking... Oh, John, be careful! Mozilla is behind you! Oh no, John, his AirPods on! Oh, did he? No, I don't think he did. Well, in... Oh. You mean the uh, the video? Yeah, he had he had the headphones on in the video. Yeah. And yet you notice your mother your mother's incoming call. I had my phone vibrate, old man. That's how I noticed. <laughs> Anyways, the head had fallen. And right next to it was the president lying dead on the ground. What was the state of the body? I didn't get a good look, because it was dark. Hmm. He suddenly become as quiet as a mouse. 
a mouse cow, cow mouse, cows. I guess John doesn't really want to remember anything about the body. Hydrobot, you're late. You're like, you're like almost half an hour late. Is that the only reason why he's going, why he's gone so quiet? Should I press him for more details? Of course I should. You didn't get a good look. Then how did you know he was dead? Th that's well. He's clearly shaken. He must be hiding something. Would you normally call for help if you see someone collapse on the ground? However, you did nothing of the sort. But but he but he was already dead. Not stirred. I knew it. Oh no, um, it's a uh, Hydrobot always comes with, um, always goes with the stream, and the stream has been up for an hour and 26 minutes. I've just been recording for 111. He was already dead. Is that so? You seem quite certain that the president was already dead. Now, is there a reason for that, I wonder? The guy was collapsed on the ground and right next to him was the fallen monster's head. Next to him? I'm not stupid. It wasn't hard to imagine what happened. <laughs> Do you guys that one like court transcript? Or like... It's like, um... The lawyer is like, uh... How did you know that this person was dead? Did you... Did you check for pulse? No? Doctor, did you... Did you, um... Did you check for anything else or anything like that? Nope. Then how could you have known that this person was dead? Because their brain was on my desk. So you're saying there's a tiny bit chance that this person might be alive. I suppose so, yes. And it would also be very likely that they, they would be practicing law right now. <laughs> you can imagine whatever you want, but there was no way for you to know that he was dead. You actually checked to make sure the president was dead, didn't you? Uh, yeah, that's right. I was scared, but I got up close to the body and checked to see if he was breathing. I thought as much. The thing is, this president never breathes, because that would make him fat. However, why would he hide that? There must be a reason. Please tell me the state of the body at the time. At, at first, I didn't know he was dead. I would have realized sooner if, he had, if there had been any blood. But there wasn't a single drop, and his clothes were completely spotless. Spotless! Either way, he wasn't breathing. That's how I knew he was already dead. Would you please append those statements to your testimony? I didn't know right away that he was dead. There was no blood on his clothes, and his clothes were spotless. Uh, let's just see the rest of the this whole thing. So you can see the entire exchange. But he wasn't breathing at all when I checked, so I knew he was already dead. Yep, and... Nope. His clothes were spotless. Yeah, that's right. You got a problem with it, old man? John, it is painfully obvious that you are desperately trying to hide something from me. What, why are you going to... What are you going on about? I'm not hiding anything. You are hiding. Something about this yellow stain on the president's clothes, correct? You were too scared of the dead body and peed yourself. Why some of it got on the president. <laughs> Oh, I never noticed that the milk actually goes in his backpack during that. Why did you leave it entirely out of your testimony? The fact you made n the fact you made no mention of it only serves to cast more suspicion upon yourself. Uh, that's because. I hope you have a convincing explanation. Judge Courtney. Allow me to explain. Why are you... 
The yellow stain left on the president's chest is almost certainly lion lily pollen. Lion lily? When I met with the president on the roof of the Grand Tower two nights ago... Yeah! <laughs> oh my god. I brought him a bouquet of lion lilies. Lion lilies are beautiful flowers with stunning golden petals. Some of the pollen from the lilies must have gotten on the president's suit. Peelin. Polly. Huh? But... I didn't see any lilies in the security footage, though. They were simply obscured by the president's huge, bulking body. Why did you bring a bouquet? That, that I cannot say. Hey, hey! You're keeping way too many secrets. You won't tell us why you met with the president or the reason you brought him flowers. My apologies. However, I did give him a, the bouquet. That much is true. But when the president's body was discovered, we didn't find any flowers. I... I honestly don't know how that could be. Huh. Hey, Miss Judge. All your answers have been too vague. You, you can't say this and you don't know that. Do you accept flimsy testimony like that in your trials? Hey, cut it out. Eat your hamburgers, Bishop. John. I threw the flowers away. I hate flowers. Because I'm edgy. You threw them away. So there were flowers near the body when you found it. Yeah, that's right. They were right on top of the president's body. They had been crushed as flat as pancakes, though. Ah, uh, I see. So the flowers were squashed by Mozilla's head, too. Although, he's most definitely not a teenager, cause if he was, Courtney would have been 13! And a large amount of pollen got stuck on the, to the president's suit. That seems to be the gist of it. However, why did you go out of your way to dispose of the flowers? Yeah, I did last time already. She's 26, he's 13. And there's, there's some discrepancies here. But maybe he's adopted. Who knows? No reason. So John's not going to tell us anything either. I guess mother and son both have a lot of secrets, huh? That is not true. I don't have any secrets. Shut your mouth. At the very least, I can tell you why John threw away those flowers. Huh? John, you saw me leaving the house with those flowers in hand, did you not? Is it actually going to be because of his stupid teenage angst? <laughs> <laughs> ah, I get it! John saw the flowers and thought of his mom. He threw them away in order to protect Judge Courtney from being suspected. Oh, oh no, it's it's not because of the teenage angst, okay. That's not true, you're all wrong. Or maybe it is, I don't know. <laughs> that was his worst lie yet. I often decorate our house our house with the with those flowers. The bouquet must have reminded him of me. So the pup just happens to find the flowers from his mother's bouquet on top of the body. That's why he threw them away and kept silent about the body. Ha! That's a tidy little story if I've ever heard one. 
and win. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Two speeds, fast and not so fast. And what's wrong with that? I suppose you prefer untidy, messy stories, Agent Lang. Don't tell me you've forgotten already, Missy. The pup confessed that he caused the monster's head to fall last night. Oh, that's true, but... He's currently the only suspect in the president's murder, yet the only thing he loves is, um, the president? And Lang Shi. Hmm, it is true that there are many reasons to suspect John. To suspect John. However, there's someone other than John who is far more suspicious. What did you say? John himself was kidnapped by the very person by that very person not too long ago. And we rescued him from the from the refrigerated warehouse near the harbor, pal! A refrigerated warehouse? That's right, pal! But Blaze did... No, it was the kidnapper. But Blaze was also there. God damn it, who's this fucking kidnapper? The refrigeration wasn't turned on, so he wasn't about to freeze to death. But if he hadn't help yelled out for help, he... we would have never found him. Once the sleeping drugs wore off, he was finally able to call out for help. Sleeping drugs, huh? If I recall correct correctly, when you were kidnapped... That's right! There was a bottle lying on the floor of the refrigerated warehouse. I think it was the same thing that was used on me not too long ago. See, I'm here. I'm having an even worse theory that the ma that the uh, Grandmaster was always Delisha. That sleepy Zizas stuff is super powerful. How about it, Agent Lang? John is clearly the victim. There is a mastermind at work behind the scenes of this case. I don't know anything about this so-called mastermind. You say they were here last night? Oh boy. I still don't know for sure yet. Um wait, no. Uh yeah, he, the case is, the court is adjourned. But Francisca is also not here, so maybe they're doing something. Ha! Huh. It's not like you to be so big, Mr. Prosecutor. Indeed, I still don't have any evidence that ties the mastermind to this murder. <laughs> Is there someone else? Is there anyone besides John who had the opportunity to murder the president? They did work together in the courtroom, so maybe they're like planning along. Is this really so hard for you, Edgeworth? That's it. How the fuck did I not think of this before? As I thought, in the end that pup is our only suspect. Isn't there one more suspect, Agent Lang? What's this? Didn't we prove it earlier? Last night there was one more person here. Blaze the best. You're saying he's the one who did it? Yup. <laughs> and then Godot comes. Godot was just the barista. Last night, John was not alone. Blaze the best was here too. Shall we consider him to be a new suspect? Blaze the best killed the president. It's entirely possible. Blaze the best. It can't be. The same guy from 12 years ago. Of course. Hmm. 12 years ago. That keeps popping up. Huh. I wonder. Well, a lot has changed. It all happened over 12 years ago. 
Back then, he and my father were close friends, and our clan protected the president's life. Lei, don't tell me you're the one from 12 years ago. He's 13, according to the file, which is very likely BS. You got it, ain't this nice? Now you're finally going to prison where you belong. 12 years is a long time coming for a sus a long time coming for a suspended sentence, don't you agree? Asian Lang, what happened 12 years ago? Nothing that concerns you. And th on the contrary, it might just have some have some sort of connection with this case. Huh. <laughs> and I suppose you have some proof, Mr. Prosecutor. Show me evidence that there's a connection between this case and the one 12 years ago. Evidence? Oh, uh, you say? If you don't have any evidence, then there's no point in talking about it. Is there any evidence that connects this case with what happened 12 years ago? That's what I'm asking you! <laughs> I mean, I want to say because of the president? Nope. Wrong. You're a fucking idiot, Edgeworth. Long she says, fuck you. Huh, he's right. Fuck me indeed. Oh, that was probably in the IS-7 thing. Was it IS-7? It was IS-7. Wait, no. There we go. This is a report written by Patricia Rowland to Blaise the Best regarding Knightley. Please read this part here. That thing you laid to rest near the flower bed 12 years ago. That's not all. Take a look at this as well. This letter was sent to Jill Crane, who was murdered two days ago. Although the sender is currently unknown, here. Although the sender is currently unknown, here, it is written as follows. Please get revenge for 12 years ago. What? 12 years ago? Agent Lang, something big is happening here. Jill Crane's murder two days ago, and now the president's murder today. There has to be some connection there. And the key to solving it lies in what happened 12 years ago, does it not? You're asking me to reopen the old wounds of the Lang clan. Agent Lang, I beg of you. Is it a microwave? Who was that just now? Shifu? Oh! Oh, these guys are all there. You guys, what are you all doing here? We followed you here, Shifu. We heard that Shifu was investigating the incident from 12 years ago. You idiots! I'm not your boss anymore. Get back to your own posts. Sir, we can't do that. What do you say? Are you disobeying my order? I mean, we don't work for you. Shifu, we also beg of you. Reinvestigate the SS5 incident from 12 years ago. None of us could ever forget that case. We know you feel the same way, Shifu. Agent Lang, even your former subordinates desire to re reinvestigate the case. And you think you can solve the myster mysteries of that case? Perhaps I can, with your help. Tch, I got it. I accept your invitation. Oh my god, the court mumble noise. 
Shifu! 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 Now then, with that decided, I guess it's time to shine. It's my turn to shine. Okay. Little thief! We're investigating a case from the past, right? And guess what the best tool for that is? The little Mr. Thief. Right. If we have the case files from the, re from the past case, I can recreate it. Unfortunately, I don't have the case files. No, little thief! Huh? What do you mean? Access to those files is restricted. It's being treated as a highly classified information. Why is that? I don't know, but it seems like there were a lot of things that they wanted to keep hidden. Even what I know... Even what I know is limited, and what was published in the newspapers back to what was published in the newspapers back then. How old was he? That will not be a problem. In, in any case, please tell us what you know. Uh, where he be? Where this boy be? Where this boy be? There this boy be. Oh, 15. Okay. Sure! The SS-5 Incident The incident occurred on a winter day 12 years ago. It was the 10th of February. The police department in this country received a call from a group of kidnappers. We've kidnapped President Huang, they said. Kidnapped? But, it, but if isn't he an adult? The SS-5 incident was the case of President Huang's kidnapping. They demanded a ransom of a hundred million dollars! One hundred million? Wait, just how much is that? It's such a large amount, she's having trouble visualizing it. That night, my old man was the last person to meet with the President. They were together at the at the Shangfa Embassy until midnight on February 10th. So your dad was framed. And yet you're still thinking that Judge Courtney did it, even though she has the exact same thing going on. After that, no one knows what the president was doing up until he was kidnapped. With the president's life at stake, the Shangfa government frantically gathered the money. After that, the ransom was delivered and the president was returned safe and sound. So, President Huang has been the president since 12 years ago. That's really amazing. Well, being in office for so long is just a small part of how amazing the this man is. Lang seemed a bit happy when he said that. And what happened to the kidnappers? Well, a top secret covert investigation was carried out. Then a secret trial was held. A trial? Does that mean the suspect was caught? The suspect was... Patricia Rowland! Whoa! 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 25, yeah? Then... The reason you came to the prison a few days ago... Yeah, it was. I was put on extended leave from the inner pole. So I decided to go back and reinvestigate what happened 12 years ago. First, I had to get a look at the face of my target. So the trial 12 years ago ended with a not guilty verdict? Yeah. Back then, my old man was in charge of every aspect of the president's security. He took responsibility for the kidnapping and was relieved of, the, of his post as bodyguard. But he continued to investigate as a regular police officer until he finally found the culprit. And it was none other than Patricia Rowland. There was no way she could be innocent. However, the result was a not guilty verdict. In the end, the case went unsolved. 
Crushed in both body and soul, my old man resigned from the police. What was the basis for arresting Patricia Rowland? There was a lot of evidence, at least that's what I think. But I can't see those documents for myself. So that's where my story ends. What should we do? With only this much information? Even the little thief would have a hard time producing a recreation. Hmm. Is there really nothing we can do? Now who is that? Looks like you could use some help. Who's that? Yup, I knew it, I knew it. Francisca, of course they were together, yup, they were together. And Mr. Shields too. We finished up with the trial and finally managed to catch up with you guys. Here, take this. This is... Ah! It's the case funds for the SS5 incident, sir. Oh, cool, so we just have that now. When Roland mentioned 12 years ago during the trial, it caught my interest. I looked into it immediately and got in touch with Interpol. I think they didn't really, like, do anything with the actual trial, but more just looked for this file. I expected no less from you, Francisco. Don't get the wrong idea, Miles Edwards. I didn't prepare these documents for you, the former prosecutor. I did it for the sake of, of the investigator taking up the case his father left behind. Sis! But I thought information on the SS5 incident was restricted to the public. That restriction was placed by the prosecutor in charge of the case. Place the best. Place the best was the prosecutor in charge? Of course he was. Him! However... As a result of the trial just now, Blaze's authority has been revoked. It's all thanks to his son. Sebastian. By bringing down his father, the door to this past case has been opened. Prosecutor De Best is currently wrapping things up with in Patri up in Patricia Rollins trial. Oh, the uh, I get it. Um, because what was it? Uh, because Judge Courtney was being uh, suspected, they had to get another judge. That's why the trial could still continue. So I'm not sure who the defense was up until, like, at that point. He told me to relay this message to you. Leave Pops and his cohorts to me. You guys just take care of the case on your end. Hmm. He's become quite reliable, right before our very eyes. Yeah, that's why Ray was then the defense. Yeah, I was trying to do a Francisca doing Sebastian's voice. But it was spit as hard. Yes. Truly. Alrighty then. This is perfect. Now that we have the files, just link the recre recreation to me. Recreation. There's a difference between recreation and recreation. Goddamn you English language. Indeed. Well then, let us begin. According to these documents, it appears that the incident took place right in front of the Tower Plaza. Then let's head to the plaza right away! Good thing it didn't take place in Shangfa. Everyone is here. Even those two idiots, god damn it.
Okay, would you please activate the little Mr. Thief? Is that just... Is that just different in this game, that they call it Little Mr. Thief in the fanlation? Right. With these case files, recreating everything should be a snap. Where should I start? Oh, okay. <laughs> Where indeed, according to these documents... It seems there was a witness to the, to the kidnapping of the president. A freelance journalist by the name of Jack Cameron. Uh... Okay, my internet was being weird. However... He happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, and was murdered by the culprit. Nope, that was me this time. I feel like it is a reference to James Cameron. So that would mean the pl oh. Okay, I think it's back, for now. So that would mean the place he saw the president at was here. Here? At the Grand Tower? No, the Grand Tower was only built around a year ago, Kay. Before that, the place contained mostly old abandoned... This place contained mostly old ab abandoned buildings. However, 12 years ago, this place was... Huh, now you're finally talking talking about some stuff that I know. Yeah, 12 years ago, at this very spot was... The Happy Family Home. What's that, pal? God fucking damn it. Oh, that was a, that was a short blip, okay. It was a place where children who had lost their parents could live. Or to put it simply, it was an orphanage. So the president was kidnapped at that orphanage. And the head of that facility at the time was Pat Patricia Rowland. Oh my god, she was an she was she was head of or of an orphanage? Jesus Christ. Apparently, Rowland always referred to it as her home. Just like the fucking prison. And she always called her, she always calls her prisoners the uh, uh, her family. God damn it, she's weird. It seems that suspicion would naturally fall upon her. Patricia Rowland, Blaise the Best, and President Huang. <laughs> oh God. The darkness that remains from the SS5 incident still casts a shadow on the present case. Okay, I'd like you to input the investigation data from Jack Cameron's murder case. We can probably assume that he was killed by one of the kidnappers. So if we solve the, mur the murder case, we'll know who the kidnappers were, right? Precisely. I'm counting on you. Jesus. <laughs> what the heck is this? Everything's green. I've come to expect such reactions. This is a recreation of the grounds of the facility that stood here 12 years ago. Based on the documents from the police investigation, 
I recreated the scene to show what, what it looked like when police arrived at 7 a.m. the next day. Hi, robot. It appears a fair amount of snow had piled up here. Uh, there's my open water. Yeah, I heard that the footprints in the snow are prime pieces of evidence. Okay, but I want to know is how are we going to walk into the place of the orphanage if there's now the tower there? This is just a layer upon like the reality, right? The snow fell during the day, on the day of the incident. So the snow fell only before the crime took place. Which means the footprints wouldn't have been wouldn't have been erased by any further snow. It m I must make sure to pay close attention to these footprints. No, Larry's not here, Dux. Yeah, right about here there should be a tower. I should be in the foyer right now. What kind of logic do we have? We still have the three footprints. That's gonna be the last piece of ev piece of every anything. <laughs> These footprints stop near the body. They must be Mr. Cameron's footprints. He sure has some big feet. They look like a size 11. God damn it! Now I have to look that up. Uh, American size 11 in Europe. Okay, that is a 41. That's about my size, I think. And a 9 in UK. 41 and a half in European. I do have big feet, though, to be fair. According to the data, his shoes match the f these footprints. <laughs> I'm pretty sure us are, ours are just centimeters, and I don't think... I think yours are inches. I don't know about the UK, though. Or aren't they like barley corns or something? So this is the eyewitness of the president's kidnapping, Jack Cameron. Look at that flower over there. What exactly did he witness? I freak. Uh. I recreated the state of this body based on the photos taken by the police. It appears he was struck in the head from behind. The murder weapon was a brick, right? It looks like the ones from this garden. The blood that flowed from his head has splattered all over the surroundings. Is the American one just inches? Top topa! I think that's how it went. I I don't know enough. I just saw one episode with you guys. You guys sound like Edgeworth when he's watching the Steel Samurai. Here, take this. It's Miss Mr. Cameron's autopsy report. I won't rest. I won't rest until I've suspected every. Oh, it's just that sentence. <laughs> a yellow flower has fallen here. In the language of flowers, it means a stolen. A stolen treasure. Okay, please stop making things up. Still, this flower seems to be of a different variety from the ones growing nearby. Hmm, well then, why is it in a place like this? Yeah, it's just weird as shit. It's just like... My foot seems about 40 centimeters, I'd say. No, wait, it can't be. No, this is smaller than 40 centimeters. I have no idea. This bothers me a little. We should examine the flower bed itself after this. I knew it. Some, Someone must have stolen this from somewhere and brought it here. 
Okay. And in the language of flowers, this means an angry prosecutor. God damn it. What? No, I didn't mean to. Okay. There. Phone. It's A and not X. I assume this is the victim's cell phone. That's right. Um, apparently Mr. Cameron gave his eyewitness testimony over the cell phone. What do you mean by over the cell phone? After Cameron After Cameron found the president, it seems that he called his girlfriend. But she didn't answer the phone, so Cameron left a message on her answering machine. The tape is in this case file too in the case file too. Do you want to hear it? Please. Oh my god, I have to give him a voice. Uh, hello, Jill? Are you asleep already? I'm in front of the facility now, but something's not right. President Huang is here all of all is is here of all places, and what's more, crap! The light just went off. I can barely see a thing now. I can't believe it, but it almost looks like he's being kidnapped. I thought I'd let you know. Donk. I could have also given him the uh. The gimmick of saying, I'm super dead! But I already did that for, uh, fucking what's-his-face, terrible artist asshole. <laughs> he didn't scream, he was just thunked on the head and then he was dead. What was that sound at the end? It seems he was attacked while he was still on the phone. Hey there. <laughs> Agent Lang, may I ask, what was the name of Mr. Cameron's beloved? I'm pretty sure I heard her name was... Come the fuck on! What isn't connected in this case? Her name was Jill Crane! So it was true. Did you say Jill? Oh my god, Jack and Jill, god damn it, god damn it. This was why she was seeking revenge for 12 long years. The feelings that the items Miss Crane inherited from her beloved brought her to the auction. She had come to exact revenge on the conductor, Blaze. So far. So far. I, it's gonna happen when Delisha probably turns out to be the mastermind. I'm gonna- I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But Miss Crane tried to get revenge on Blaze, right? She may have wanted to get revenge on him for covering up the kidnapping case. Or perhaps she thought Blaze himself was the kidnapper. Hmm, the victim was carrying a camera. I do. It's the exact same voice I gave Lada and, um... Uh, I gave Lada, um, Nicole, and Larry. So, if all four of those show up in the same scene, I'm quitting. I'm quitting this game forever. Oh, according to the case files, it seems he only managed to take a single photo. Um, here it is. This is... Who slapped that snowman? Isn't that the president? He's being held at gunpoint. This must be the scene the victim witnessed. So the person in the coat must be the kidnapper. Indeed, it seems like some sort of disguise. If the logic of Agent Lang's father is correct, 
then this person should be Patricia Rowland. She's that tall? She doesn't look that tall in her sprites. But why is there only one photo? Perhaps he was killed before he could take any more. <laughs> yeah, I told you I never look at the obvious shit. <laughs> God damn it, I keep pressing X. This is the brick that was used as the murder weapon. You can find bricks like this all over the garden. They must have used one of them as a weapon. Okay, now let's look at the actual body. Jack Cameron was a freelance journalist. He was killed because he witnessed the president's kidnapping. The blood really stands out in the recreation. It's giving me the heebie-jeebies. Yeah, why is the blood not green? Even in the original photo it looks brutal enough. A lot of blood was spilled. The back of his head is covered in blood. That must be where all the blood spilled from. According to the autopsy report, he was struck in the back of the head with a brick. Indeed. It's likely that the killer approached Mr. Cameron from behind. Hmm? Is the victim holding something in his right hand? Busy. That's also written in the case files. Um... Seems he was holding onto a button. A button? Did he tear it off the culprit's clothes? Okay, I think that was everything here. So let's see. I already checked it, this area, yep. Okay, and now I was supposed to look at the flower bed. A flower bed. According to the data, this facility had three gardens. I just call that one garden that is in that has like that has points apart. And each of these gardens contain three flower beds. Hmm? The way these flower beds are lined up. Have I seen this arrangement somewhere before? Have you? Since it was during the winter, there were no flowers in bloom. What a shame. Hmm? What's this yellow flower? Huh? Why is there a single yellow flower here? Set is a lion lily. It's a very rare type of lily. Did you say lion lily? That's the flower Miss Courtney gave to the president! What's it doing here? Could it be just a coincidence? If I recall, the lion lily originates from Asia. In the language of flowers, it means the bond between parent and child. I never you, you you were so familiar with flowers. That much is common sense. You're simply lacking in your studies much as M Miles Miles Edgeworth what? Miles Edgeworth. Okay. Is it supposed to be this? What the fuck? Perhaps this is the true nature of the of the kaiju's footprints. True nature? But that's not what? That's not where those were the Wait, no, this is Oh! Oh, this is the left garden! Oh shit! I get it! Compare the positions of the three footprints to the three flower beds on the left. Ah! The exposed areas of dirt match the match the areas where the flower beds were. So Blaze dug holes in front of where each of the three flower beds used to be. I was wondering why the fuck he made them uh we why he made them Mozilla shaped. Exactly. Now, why would he do such a thing? I believe we have a piece of evidence that tells us why. 
Why did Blaze dig holes in the ground near the flower beds? I mean, I thought you were going to say that, Mr. Edgeworth. Oh god, the lag. Um... I mean, is it just that he's connected? Okay, yeah, it is literally just that he's connected. The report from Patricia Rowland to place the best. Or maybe that report actually says something about digging shit up. Uh, the thing he laid to rest in front of the flower bed 12 years ago. Yeah, it's shit he has to dig up. The report from Patricia Rowland to place the best. It said that something was laid to rest in front of the flower bed. So Blaze was following Miss Rowland's instructions to dig it up. But why would he dig up three holes? The report didn't state which of the three flower beds the item was in front of, and also which of the three gardens. Oh, so Blaze didn't know exactly where to dig. That's why he had to dig up all three spots. Most likely, yes. I'm sure Blaze himself was none too happy about that. He went through all that trouble. I wonder what he was trying to dig up. Do I have what he was trying to dig up? The brick? Okay, yeah, no, not the brick. That would be stupid. This scene sure puts a chill in your bones. Uncle Ray needs a hot babe to keep him warm. Could you please try to be a little more serious? Oh, if that's what Kay wants, I guess I have no choice. Miles, this is where it all began. Isn't that right? Yes, I fear that is the case. <laughs> what was Patricia and Blaze's true goal? There, may there are still many mysteries yet to be solved. Indeed, it is just as you say. Particularly, the mystery of what will happen to Kay Ray's love isn't it suspenseful? Ray, that's creepy. Not even a little. You just couldn't resist, could you, Mr. Shields? Why could... Why can't you ever stay serious for more than a minute? I think he's genuinely incapable of staying serious for that long. Three flower bed... Three flower beds and snow. Agent Lang, what's the matter? Something strange. I wasn't able to read the SS5 incident case files until now. Since Blaze had all access to that information restricted. Yeah, that's right. And yet, I feel like I've seen this exact scene somewhere before. You were a kid in the orphanage. At 15 though. But your dad was there. Wait, no. Huh, what? That doesn't make sense. Disregard that. What do you mean? Where did I see this? If I could just remember. He looks deep in thought. I should leave him alone for a while. I should leave him alone for a while. Let's talk to him more. After the SS5 incident, the president completely changed. <laughs> well, he must have felt like his trust had been betrayed. I guess it's only natural. He cut off all ties with the Lang Clan, putting an end to our deep bond of trust. My old man wanted to at least apologize in some way, so he tried to go see the President what more times than I can count. Of course, the President refused to meet with him. He wouldn't even give him the time of day. I don't know if it was from the bodyguards, but there were times where he, there were times he'd come back all beaten up. Huh. <laughs> But me standing around like talking about the past doesn't do Jack, does it? Jack Cameron? <laughs> oh, sorry. I shall be the judge of that. For now, just keep talk just keep telling us what you know. You're still as tactless as ever. 
Well, I figured you'd say as much. The fall of my old man was also the fall of the Lane Clan. The family that failed to protect the president. That's what we became. My old man started to investigate the case like he was possessed. Could someone so driven by obsession truly conduct a proper investigation? Sheesh. You really don't pull at your punches, Mr. Prosecutor. Don't think I blindly trust in your investigation just because he's my... Just... I trusted in his investigation just because he's my old man. <laughs> yep. His investigation was me meticulous down to the last detail. Apparently, he even conducted a thorough interview with each and every kid at the orphanage. He interviewed every child. I wonder how fruitful his results were. I'm just imagining him running up to every kid and being like, Did you do it? Did you do it? You did it! I know you did it! Did you do it? What do you want? John, I'd like you to tell me the exact details of your kidnapping. You were kidnapped at the garbage pickup area, right? Why'd you go there? You don't have to act as a go- as a go-between, I can just talk to the old man directly. So he says. Looks like he's finally starting to warm up to you. I went to the garbage pickup to throw away the flowers I found in the body. It was nearby, and I thought it'd be harder to find to find there than if I just tossed them in a trash can. I went there last night too, but the gate was locked. And that's why you went there again today to dispose of them. Yeah, but when I got there, someone said, "Oops!" Someone suddenly grabbed me from behind. And you sleepy seasons on you, right? Catching Z's is now super easy with sleepy seasons. Even though she was able to, vic she was also a victim to it. She seems to have taken a liking to the slogan. I feel like it's probably Sleepy Z Z so the slogan rhymes, but still. Whoever grabbed me was really strong, but that's all I know. I have no idea who it was. I see. So that's what happened. After the drugs wore off, did you notice anything about your surroundings? Those drugs were brought to you by Sleepy Z Z Z. Catching Z's is now super easy with sleep is easy Z's. <laughs> God damn it. We were drinking Fatalium all the time. It was kind of cold when I woke up. It was in a dark, empty room. Boxes with foreign writing on them were lying around, so I figured it was a warehouse. The whole place was like a giant refrigerator. It was a commercial, it was a commercial warehouse. That's right. John was rescued thanks to the collective efforts of Kay and Detective Gumshoe. Since it was still a bit cold, the cooling unit's power must must not have been cut for too long. For some reason, they didn't think to take my phone, so... Okay. They didn't think to do that. There must be a reason for that. I used to call for help. I see. In any case, it's good that you're safe and sound, John. <laughs> I need your fake sympathy, old man. What an incorrigible child. He's just like a certain someone I know. Shade. Please, ask me anything you wish. Oh, whoops. You have my heartfelt thanks for bringing John back. Oh, even the thought of him not coming back makes me... Hey, oh Matt, don't bully my mom! No, no, th that wasn't my intention. Who? Lo look at him go! Mommy's little knight is shining armor! He's so cool! It it's not like that. Quit blabbering stupid stuff about me. John, please wait. May I proceed, Mr. Edgeworth? My actions were unbecoming of one. 
of one who calls herself a servant of the goddess of law. I won't ask her forgiveness, however, I... Judge Courtney, I'm not not as well acquainted with the goddess of law as you are. However, isn't that goddess also a mother of other gods? No. <laughs> what, what makes you think that? Ah! The law makes exceptions for extenuating circumstances. It understands a mother's heart. I'd say perhaps your goddess sympathizes with you more than you think. Mr. Edgeworth... I don't get it. What the heck are you two blabbering about? <laughs> it's okay, John. I don't have a clue either. It seems the dust has settled on, the, on day one of Patricia Rowland's trial. Yes, while the decision has yet to be reached, I would say a guilty verdict is quite likely. I only know the pirate version of that, Arthemis. I'm sure a thorough investigation into her connection with Blaze will be conducted as well. After seeing Sebastian today, I know we can put our faith into in him. Just like Kay, Sebastian is also in the midst of training for the future ahead. Hmm, I see. When you say it like that, I guess we have more in common than I thought. I feel like it's probably Greek. Themis sounds Greek. I said a few mean things to him. Yep. So the next time we meet, I'd like to apologize to him. I'm sure you will get your opportunity, but for now... Yes, at present, solving this case is our top priority. Oh, God damn it! I'm gonna guess I don't have to talk to the body, to the MIB. Shifu, I know it's not my place, but I have a request. Please, marry me! <laughs> Do a roll call, just like old times. Just like old times, huh? Well, <laughs> what a lark. Guess I have no choice. Roll call! One! I'm sorry. A roll call with one person is really lacking. That's nonsense. It's got nothing to do with the numbers. Even though you're the only one here, the pack is always one, right? If you think it's lacking, then howl loud enough to make up for the rest of the pack. Roll call! One! 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 That man, is he on the verge of tears? <laughs> Scruffy, don't you dare say a word, I'm warning you. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, please help me, sir. What is it, Detective Gumshoe? It's about the story behind the SS5 incident, sir. Even though Blaze may have lost his authority, there's no way you can get confidential documents this quickly. That got me curious, so I made a few calls and asked around, asked around. And I found out that Miss Von Karma used all sorts of forceful tactics to... It's coffee! I thought I want you! Hey! You've done a lot for us, Francesca. I promise I will bring this to an end with my own hands. Does this really mean we have to talk to them? No, it doesn't. Okay, cool. What a scoop! Would you look at that? Those fox have turned... Huh, done, turned green! Uh, maybe they're sick or something. But the clothes are green, too. Well, I'll be. Their clothes are all green, too. I reckon this ain't no ordinary disease. You, you picked up on something good. Look, Looks like you're taking it to the next level. Yes, she! It looks like there's no way we'll be getting a word in. Not that I have any desire to intervene. Okay, then... Did we get anything more? Nope. I actually completely forgot that. Tss. 
Okay, let's look at th these toys. These playground toys are modeled after a hare and a tortoise, like from the fable. The tortoise and the hare competed in a race. And in the end, the hare lost. And now, for something completely different. It's time for a cake quiz! What? Why did the hare lose? There are three choices. Hmm, I already know the answer. Sorry, it's because the hare took a nap. One, the hare's favorite shoes were sold by the Yadagarasu. Two, the tortoise trained with the Yadagarasu until it became faster than the hare. Three, unbeknownst to the two animals, the Yadagarasu stole the victory from the shadows. Those are my only choices. Is it too hard for you? Okay, I'll give you a hint. It starts with a... She... She wants me to pick number three. <laughs> what about this igloo? This bear-shaped igloo is both cute and scary at the same time. I hereby declare this a bear glue. Hmm. It looks as though this igloo could fit three people inside. Yeah, I bet you could live up to three years in this bear glue. Three years? What about the summertime? The be The igloo would melt. Mr. Edgeworth, say it again! Say it one more time! The igloo would melt. <laughs> this door! I remember seeing it from somewhere. Of course you would. It looks exactly like the Grand Tower door. The Grand Tower door we saw earlier. But this is a recreation from 12 years ago. That means the store has been here since then. It seems when the Grand Tower was built, they decided to reuse that the door rather than destroying it. It's like the old saying goes, discover something new by heating up something cold. Oh, it seems she's understood the correct meaning of a saying for once. Hmm. But if you're using a microwave to do it, don't heat it for over five minutes. <laughs> this is something Bish this is something someone needs to tell the Bishop's co-workers. Okay, what about the swing set? It's a swing decorated with the face of an elephant. It looks like there's some kind of motor attached to the other side of the elephant. There's one thought that has crossed my mind every that has crossed the minds of every top class swinger. If only I could do a full 360. With that powerful motor rotating the swing, that dream could finally be achieved. Rotating with the motor, but wouldn't that be dangerous? Mr. Edgeworth, you can't fulfill your dreams unless you're willing to take some risks. Is that the real problem here? Okay, I'm really not sure. Am I also supposed to look at these foot? I'm supposed to look at both sets of footprints. The footprints here seem to have to lead to and from the body. These footprints were believed to be the culprits. The shoe size is about size se 7. Which is... 40 European, 9 UA. Wait, no. This says you can... What? I said American size 7 in Europe, Google. Why do you give me the UK size 7? Okay, US size 7, 38 in Europe and 5 in UK. Um, honestly, not much up until I looked at these footprints, which are different from the ones I looked at before. Oh, oh, <laughs> Bisho, you know what you missed? The only thing you missed was that K said that microwaving longer for fi longer than five minutes is something people shouldn't do. No joke. It seems we won't be able to tell who the culprit is from these footprints. I could probably look at that again. Hmm. 
There we go. But if you're using it to micro, using a microwave to do it, don't heat it for four, for over five minutes. Okay, I'm still not getting anything new though. Of course. For eight minutes and then more. I don't get it. Am I actually supposed to sh to present someone something to someone? Or am I t supposed to look like through these things? Okay, so I'm get. If it's hard to see, then it's gotta be actually in this. Okay, I looked at. It's not this shovel, or whatever that is. Wait, what? Oh, come the fuck on! Ugh. This pillar seems to be burned. According to the files, it seems there was a fire on the evening of the, in of the incident. A fire? Um, let's see here. Huh? It says that one of the children at the orphanage spilled kerosene and set it on fire as a prank. Fucking this is promised Neverland. I guess that kid had far too much energy. <laughs> and thanks to that, we can't make out any of the footprints near the main hall. Okay, that didn't give us logic though, but it ends the investigation. We've learned pretty much all that we can about the situation at the time of the murder. Oh, in that case, is there another scene you'd like to recreate? Yes. Would you do the honors? I would like you to recreate the scene when the vi when the victim witnessed the president's kidnapping. Right. I'll recreate the scene based on the on Mr. Cameron's photo. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cameron is standing in the middle of the flower beds. The blood is already there. Okay. And the president and his kidnapper are standing on the road. My old man based his initial investigation on this man's eyewitness testimony. As a result, it led him to believe that the kidnapping and his facility were related. And that's how he came to suspect the head of the orphanage, Patricia Rowland. <laughs> yeah. But in court, Blaze the best treated this testimony as if it meant nothing. Why would he do that? <laughs> yes. Everyone's the mastermind! It's Gumshoe, Delisha, and Larry, the dumb Yadagarasu. The president of of his kidnap and his kidnapper were not standing inside the orphanage grounds. So a connection between the orphanage and the kidnapping was difficult to prove. <laughs> Except if they introduce a new character for that. Then I'll be wrong. I see. It's not like they were seen inside the orphanage after all. <laughs> no matter how much evidence the, the detectives gather at the crime scene, it doesn't mean squat if the prosecutor won't use it in court. Blaze the Best had some kind of connection with Patricia Rowland. I figured they had some kind of deal going on. 
In other words, you think that Blaze was one of the kidnappers? I like genuinely feel like it's delicious somehow. However, your father was convic convinced that Patricia Rollner was the culprit. Your father was a highly capable investigator, investigator I presume. <laughs> Just like Gustavia. Might he, ha might he have had some other basis for his conclusions besides the eyewitness testimony? Yeah, I figure he did, but I had no idea what it was. My old man never really talked much about this case. Agent Lang's father, Dai Long Lang. Doesn't that just mean very long in Jeff in like weird English Japanese? <laughs> President Huang's most trusted confidant. The truth he discovered was suppressed by Blaze the Best. First we must find that hidden truth. And the only reason you liked him was because because I gave him a good voice. Uh, Francis is just who, what we call Gustavia because I gave him the voice of uh, Francis from the YouTube show Cooking with Dog. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. It's the president's kidnapper. Let's try drawing out whatever we can from their appearance. Right, I got it. Their appearance, their, their appearance, their appearance. First things first, the kidnapper threatened the president with a gun. Look at how they're holding the gun. It's like they're trying to show it off. Totally not cool. Oh my god. So what does she mean? Unfortunately, we cannot see the, per the person's face because it's hidden by their coat and hat. And look at that pop collar! It it's like they're trying to be all that. Totally not cool! Yeah, and someone slapped the snowman. Their body seems relaxed, suggesting that they had a composed mental state. They even had one hand stuffed in their pocket! Totally not cool at all! Okay, I'm sorry, but that's... Stuff I've drawn out from their appearance. The stuff I've drawn out from their appearance! That may be true, but... Warrior Dragon, okay. I thought it meant, like, small dragon, that would have been amazing. Um, about this snowman... When we recreated the scene where Mr. Cameron was killed, it had already melted. Its scarf was all soggy and one of its button eyes was missing. Button eyes! Okay, so for some reason, for some reason Cameron had the button eye in his hand and it was bloody? Indeed, at this stage it appears that most of its original form was still intact. Although there's one spot that looks unnaturally lacking. Poor thing, I bet some naughty kid must have plucked it off. Although, from a thief's perspective, that kid does have some promise. <laughs> Was it plucked off by one of the children at the orphanage? No, perhaps. It was taken by an entirely different person altogether. Yeah, let's deduce. This snowman, wouldn't you say it's missing something? Ah, it's right eye is missing. Precisely. And what's more, that missing eye happens to be in our possession. The button that Mr. Cameron was holding on to! It's got the exact same design as the snowman's left eye! <laughs> if we assume this button was indeed the snowman's eye... A huge contradiction arises. If this button is the snowman's eye, what contradiction arises? I mean, technically, location of the victim? 
yeah, the location of the victim. Although it would be great if it was the location of the president, because that would, like, get rid of all the shit Blaze said. The victim was holding onto the button. Furthermore, the button was stained with blood. In other words, he grabbed the button after he was attacked. For example, if we were to picture it in this way... After being struck in the back of the head, Mr. Cameron lost his balance. As he was falling, he reached out his hand toward the nearby snowman. However, it could not support his weight, and he collapsed while still grasping the button. Huh? That means... Mr. Cameron was near the snowman when he was attacked. Indeed. At the very least, he must have been within arm's reach. However... It's quite clear that he would have... That he would not have been able to reach it from his current position. <laughs> he just runs towards the snowman after being killed. But Mr. Cameron's footprints only lead towards the flower bed. Can we be certain of that? Of that? Those foot Can we be certain that those footprints really are Mr. Cameron's? It seems we'll need to investigate them one more time. Understood. I recreate the time the body was discovered see scene one more time. <laughs> These footprints should match up with Mr. Cameron's shoes, right? Let's inspect them again. These footprints... Up. Oh. Up. Oh. Up. Oh. Might have had a few drop frames there. These footprints, are they really Mr. Cameron's? They're from size 11 shoes. And these huge footprints match up with Mr. Cameron's shoes. No matter how you No matter how you look at it, they're moving steadily towards the center of the flower beds. But when Mr. Cameron was attacked... Um, he grabbed the button from the snowman. Even with the Great Thief's peak human conditioning, your arm just can't stretch that far. Let alone an ordinary civilian, it'd be completely impossible. The footprints come from the shoes worn by the victim, just as the case files say. However, does that mean Mr. Cameron was the owner of these shoes? We should re-examine Mr. Cameron's shoes. There's nothing there, okay. These shoes should match these footprints. However... Yeah, they're kind of a little too small. Hmm, these shoes. It seems like they were not the ones originally worn by the victim. What do you mean? If you look closer, you'll see the laces were tied up strangely. And the size doesn't seem to fit quite right either. What? That would mean these huge footprints leading up to the victim's feet were most likely made by someone other than the victim. <laughs> so then, the footprints leading to and from the victim's head must be Mr. Cameron's. No, not necessarily. It seems a little too small to be the victim's footprints. So no, so none of the footprints are his? Then, which way did Mr. Cameron walk from? It's quite simple. The victim did not walk here on his own according on his own accord, but rather he was carried here after he was murdered by the culprit. The question now becomes, where was he killed and carried from? Perhaps it was near the snowman after all. Okay, I didn't even get to look at Okay, it's Y. No, I didn't even look at it. Uh, this... this is a person, but just before he was kidnapped at gunpoint. The president was strong, but there's no way he'd win against a gun. And Mr. Cameron photographed this scene from the middle of the flower beds. There seemed, there's something highly unnatural about this. It would have been impossible for him to grab the snowman's button from there. Indeed. 
We should examine the state of the other recreation once more. Oh, okay, so I'm not supposed to look at what the president was doing there. Oh god, it's actually frowning. Mr. Cameron's body was moved, if we consider the button he was holding onto. It's highly unlikely that he was killed near the snowman. I should take a closer look. Oh boy. It appears that the outside of the facility was also decorated with flower beds. Wow, so there are flowers that bloom in the winter. Snow has even piled up on the flower bed. Indeed, it seems a little cold and it gives off seems a little cold and it gives off a fine taste, even though it's just a recreation. Indeed. It gives off a little cold and tastes quite refined, even though it's just a recreation. Thank you, Kay. This snowman has become a sad sight to look at. It can't be helped. Snow and ice melt away with time. Just like the mysteries of the cases you've solved, Mr. Edgeworth. As the time passes, those mysteries melt away with you, while you continue to keep your cool. You do realize I'm racking my brain trying to solve those mysteries during a case. There are some size 7 footprints going back and forth. According to the police files, these are the culprit's footprints. Indeed. They seem to grow faint and disappear as they approach the road. There's not much snow left on the road after all. There's not much snow left on the road after all. As expected, it'll be difficult to determine who these footprints belong to. Okay, what the fuck am I supposed to look at here then? Yeah, I won't rest. But there isn't any more to see. I guess I just don't have the thing yet to deduce it. Hey, that worked! If we suppose that Blaze was one of the kidnappers, it becomes more likely that he dug up yes that what he dug up yesterday is connected to the abduction. Ah! W what is it? I figured it out! It was treasure! Treasure! Couldn't Blaze have dug up the ransom money? The 100 million dollar ransom. Buried in the ground until the heat had died down. It's certainly possible. I know, right? Wow, really? She actually said something useful. Okay, I'm... Um... I'm gonna look at the other scene again, cause there was blood there even though the guy wasn't dead. And that's very odd. Cameron took a photo of the president from this spot. And he also called Miss Crane, right? At that time, the killer was already behind him. Holding the murderous brick. Okay, are we just not gonna pay attention to the blood? The fuck it. Is it not weird to you that there's blood there when nobody died? Okay, I guess. I guess there really isn't anything to see here. Hold on, alright. Is there anything else different? Ah shit, that's the wrong button. Uh, 
No, the flower is still there. I have the thing, but it didn't say the deuce. According to the data, this facility had three gardens. And each of these gardens contained three flower beds. Hmm. The way these flower beds are lined up. Have I seen this arrangement? Why can't I skip this? I've already seen it. Okay. Then let's just manually skip this, I guess. I keep pressing L instead of Y. Okay, I looked at these plants. I looked at the snowman. Is that the plants again? What? That just looked like it was fucking... That just looked like it was two flower beds. And not one flower bed with a missing brick. Huh? There's a brick missing here. Ugh. The rest are all in order. Uh, God damn it. Perhaps the missing brick was the one used as the murder weapon. Ah, yeah, it seems to be just the right size to fit in the gap perfectly. Oh, got it. Uh, frames. And here we go. As I thought, it seems the murder actually occurred near the snowman. Both the button Mr. Cameron was holding and the murder weapon came from there. Oh, so... So the kidnapping was in the premises of the orphanage, while he was on the road! Indeed, also if we assume that the killer picked up the brick near the snowman, and then tried to sneak up behind Mr. Cameron... Oh, Mr. Cameron totally would have seen the person picking up the brick! Exactly. Okay, please help the, update the recreation. Mr. Cameron was not in the middle of the flower beds, but near the snowman. Okay, I'm on it! Well, this is... awkward. <laughs> I wish this is how this happens. <laughs> this is so stupid. The right party over here. No matter how you look at it, this is strange. All the people involved in the case are gathered in the same place. Did we make a mistake here or something? One piece of evidence this rec recreation is based on is odd. If I had to choose which of the which piece of evidence is fake, which piece of evidence is likely to be fake? Was this photo really taken by Mr. Cameron? Eh? What do you mean? We have proven that whoever killed Mr. Cameron also moved the body. Yup. <laughs> For what reason would they have to del- For what reason would they have to deliberately move this his body? Perhaps the culprit wanted to falsify the scene that Mr. Cameron witnessed. And that's why they took a fake photo? They made the president stand under the street light and took a photo with Cameron's camera. It would have been quite simple. Now that you mention it, Miss Cameron, Mr. Cameron's camera only had one photo on it, right? Indeed. 
In all likelihood, the original roll of film had been removed from the camera. Hydrobot. And after loading a new roll of film into the camera, the fake photo was taken. I see. So this photo must have been taken after Mr. Cameron was killed, right? Exactly. This was not the scene Mr. Cameron actually witnessed. It's likely that this photo is forged evidence. Then, what if Mr. Cameron witnessed the president and his kidnapper? The photo isn't the only piece of evidence that indicates what Mr. Cameron witnessed. Ah, the testimony he left on the answering machine. Precisely. He should list. We should listen to the recording one more time and confirm what is what was said. Where else could the president and his kidnapper have been? I thought we're supposed to listen to the thing again, but it doesn't even give me the fucking option here. They were over there, so what's the basis for that claim? I don't know, you didn't let me listen to the recording! Hello, Jill. Wait, what was his voice again? Hello, Jill. Are you, are you asleep already? I'm in front of the facility now, but something's not right. In front of the facility, okay? President Wong is here of all, is here of all places, and what's more, crap, the light just went off. I can barely see a thing now. I can't believe it, but it almost looks like he's being kidnapped. I thought I'd let you know. Dunk. He's here, and the light went off. In other words, you don't know, do you? No. Oh, so it wasn't here. It wasn't there. Let's start remembering what Mr. Cameron said in this eyewitness testimony. Didn't he say something about the situation at the scene? Indeed, Mr. Cameron's testimony should provide a major clue. But you don't let me look. Now you let me look. I don't get what how this what. The light went off. Okay, yep. Mr. Cameron said this on his on the answering machine. The light just went off. I can barely see a thing now. There are only two places here where the lights are broken. By the way, shout out to the English language. Uh, where saying something went off can both mean it was turned off and it was turned on. The light by the orphanage! Okay, could you please update the recreation? Roger! Fam. This is! So the kidnapper was near the orphanage! Indeed. With this, we've shown the connection between the orphanage and the kidnapping. So that's why they moved the body and took a fake photo to create false testimony. In order to remove any suspicion towards the orphanage in court. <laughs> hmm, with this, the state of the recreation has changed completely. The time the body was discovered scene was has probably been greatly impacted as a result. Yeah, just uh, it's more like when a bomb went off. Or some, there was something more to that. But it's like off and off are antonyms, I think. Then let's go check out check it out right away. Preparations are ready. Since the state of the recreation has changed once again, I should press the Y button and select Change Recreation. Let's give it a try. Like I haven't done that like seven times during this use of the Little Thief. Yeah, what's up? Okay. Now, what the fuck with this blood? Shh. 
The blood splatter above the snow. There certainly was a substantial amount. It's almost as if the murder was actually committed. As if the murder was actually committed there here. But Mr. Cameron should have been attacked near the snowman. Exactly. In that case, this blood must belong to someone else. What? But the police reports say said this was Mr. Cameron's blood. The one in charge of this case was Blaze the best. It would have been simple for him to falsify that information. But would it be faster to just clean up the blood stains rather than falsify the information? He wouldn't be able to do that. Think about it. Blaze knew that Mr. Cameron's body would be discovered here. In which case the forensic department would naturally become involved. Ah, a luminol reaction. They would have discovered it with the power of science. <laughs> yes. Ah, amazing. Precisely. It would have been difficult to completely erase all traces of the blood. Oh my god. You guys. You guys. However, falsifying the results of a blood test would be much easier in comparison. He would, he would just have to switch the results from the forensics report. Ah, oh, what a bummer. Knowing those documents I read were falsified. Uh, it looks like Mr. Cameron's clothes were completely soaked in blood. Hmm. The blood scatter here got onto Cameron's clothes. That would mean, at the time, the bloodstains here had not dried yet. I see. So then this hurt somebody's blood. Uh, that one was kind of a stretch. Was splattered here for just a short while before Mr. Cameron was murdered. Indeed, that's exactly right. However, if that's the case, wouldn't a new contradiction arise in this recreation? Okay, a new contradiction? Well, let's look at the brick first, because that also does but I can't look at the brick. What does this contradict? I mean, I know it's really weird, but I'm not quite sure what this contradicts yet. Okay, the contradiction is supposed to be with the different person's blood. Uh... Look at this again. Oh yeah, this is the this is IS seven. Wait.
tomorrow <laughs> I shall interrogate him in the warden's office I'll get him to confess when that thing he laid to rest in front of the flower bed 12 years ago, he simply must retrieve it. <laughs> but she didn't, though. I mean, she did, but post mortem. Oh wait, I never really looked into this. And that doesn't help at all. I mean, the only thing I can think of... This wouldn't be hard though. This wouldn't be a tricky one. But I'm gonna at least try. Nope, of course not. I'm actually getting low on health. Wait, we should keep in mind when exactly the fire started and take a closer look at that at the area. Fire on the evening. Fire. Hmm. Let's see here. Huh? It says that one of the children at the orphanage spilled kerosene and set it on fire as a prank. I guess that kid had far too much energy. And thanks to that, we can't make out any of the footprints near the main hall. Wait. So that's got something to do with the um, the blood was supposed to be hidden by the flame, but the flame didn't do its job, but the blood is still fresh, which means the flame can't be from the evening. This is a clear contradiction. Huh? You mean this blood stain? Do you see how this blood stain is broken up by the remains of the fire? This is proof that the fire occurred after the blood had scattered around the area. <laughs> huh? But I thought the fire occurred before the murder. It seems that information is suspect as well. If the fire had broken out after the murder... Then the child who started the fire should have seen the body and the bloodstains. Why then did they not come forward as a witness? It's likely that they would have put Blaze at a great disadvantage. Guess we'll need to investigate this fire in more detail. Hey, you! Yes, sir! There should be some records of the fire in the police department, under a different case file. I want you to bring me every last investigation report about the fire. <laughs> Understood, Shifu. Oh, and one more thing. What is it, sir? Contact the House of Lang, of Lang in Shangfa. There should be evidence from this case in my old man's room. What do you mean? I just remembered why I recognized this scene. A long time ago, I saw a picture in, in my old man's room. It was a drawing resembling this scene. What did you say? However... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He'll be sent to Shang Fa to just dig through his dad's room. Oh, 
However, I think it looked like something a child drew. A child? Then the artist may have been the culprit behind the fire. It should still be somewhere in my old man's room. Have them send it over here. Understood, sir. Heal. Is this the first time I've seen a heal in this game that didn't fully heal me? That was fast? Shifu, I'm back! I've brought the info on, on the fire the kids started and a photo of the drawing on your father's office. And, al and also, oh, I've been waiting for this. Hurry up and hand them over. Okay, now I'm scared. <laughs> the information held by Agent Lang's father. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's, it's the stupidest thing. I bet Larry drew this. This is it! It's exactly what I remembered! <laughs> this was the picture drawn by the child, depicting the night of the incident. Oh god damn it, no it is, you're right! It sure looks like it was drawn with a child's touch. As I thought, the one who drew this is most likely the child who started the fire. Shifu! What now? Sorry, but it's gonna have to wait. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor! Why do you think my old man had this? Perhaps he obtained it during the during the course of his investigation into the incident. Although I don't know why he would why he would have concealed it. Agent Lang might have been able to see the details of, of the fire. Yeah, sure. Allow me to read it post haste. <laughs> oh boy. The boy who started the fire snuck out of bed on the night of the incident. Hmm. It seems this boy went missing several days later. What? Don't tell me that he witnessed something he shouldn't have. Oh my god, Blaze actually killed him. Horrible! He was only a child after all! Well, I'd hate for that to be the case. We can't rule out the possibility entirely. Huh? Apparently the boy left some stuff behind at the orphanage, and it was taken as evidence. What's this? That's... What's that doing here? Huh? Mr. Prosecutor, do you recognize this? Yes, I know one piece of evidence that that's related to it. Which piece of evidence is related to the to what the boy left behind? What the fuck is going on? I don't know what it's doing here. But isn't that the missing horn from this Mozilla doll? No way. You mean this came off the president's? You know of it? Yeah. I've noticed the president kept it close by kept it close by as a decoration. I always thought it was strange how one of the one of the horns was missing. If you twist the horn, this doll will pay will play back any previously recorded audio. So if you put this missing horn back in place, we might be able to hear a different recording. What? That's kind of a stretch, but okay. Indeed, it is possible. The doll is currently on the 51st floor of the Grand Tower. Hey, you! You heard that, right? Yes, sir! I'll be right back! Shifu, I've got it! The mighty Mozilla doll! Well done! Give it to the prosecutor over there! Wouldn't it be hilarious if, um, if this just turns out that, uh, 
that it just keeps the same recording and this whole thing was for naught. I would honestly give the Man in Black a Tails voice. If Tails voice wasn't so got wasn't so horrendously awful, at least in Sonic Heroes, which I know him most from. If we insert the horn found at the orphanage into the doll. It's a perfect fit! Well, can you hear anything? Mr. Huang. Mr. Huang, it's Amy. It's been a while. I saw the news that you would be coming to this country. I was really nervous about doing this, but I decided to send you a message. What the fuck? Please stop that playback! Judge Courtney? Uh, what's wrong? Stop it! Now! Wait, what the what? It's a boy, your son, he's just been born. I'm sorry, that's all I wanted to tell you. His name is John, John Marsh. It's a fine name for him, don't you think? What the fuck? Ah! Marsh? So he is 13! Then how old is Courtney? Did she say John? I'll be waiting in the courtyard of the orphanage at midnight on February 9th. Even if it's just once, I want John to be able to meet you. Oh, he is adopted! This is a completely different person! Yeah! I'm sorry if I'm being selfish, but I'll be waiting. No way, that was my... John... What's the meaning of this? Miss Courtney? John is not my real son. He's adopted. Did John know about this? Of course he knew. John's mother, Amy Marsh, passed away about five years ago. She and I were cousins. Since we were young, we've always been really close. We were often mistaken for sisters. That's why, when she passed away, I thought it was only natural that I'd look after John. Also, there were circumstances which prevented me from revealing his father's identity. I never even told John his father's name. And now it's all been revealed, thanks to the recording on that doll. Did John's mother send the doll to the president? Hey! John, was he... The president really my dad? What the fuck? What the fuck? Yes, he was. What the fuck? Before you were born, Amy worked as a diplomat in Shang Fa. A diplomat? So that must be how she became acquainted with President Huang. Hang on, did you tell me she worked in, at the orphanage? Yes, after returning to this country, Amy left her job as a diplomat. <laughs> she went, She always had great passion for charity work, so she began working at the orphanage. Hey, Miss Courtney! So this Amy girl, she called the president there herself, but... She never showed up at the scene of the SS5 incident. What's with that? Amy couldn't make it. Apparently someone had been following her the whole night. Perhaps it was Blaze. I can't say for certain, but it's possible that it was his doing. After that, Amy never got another chance to see the president again. So, she died five years ago. This, conversa this conversation must be painful for John. Alright, hey John. You thirsty? How about I buy us some juice? 
We can go together. I'm a part of this too. And I'll listen to I'll listen until the end. Besides, I can afford to buy my own juice. Also, I don't drink juice. Only cow juice. Oh! Shot down by a kid. John, do you understand the reason I met with the president two days ago? The secret meeting from two nights ago. I wanted to tell him about Amy's death and that you were alive and well. But I... I see. That's why you couldn't tell us your reason for meeting with the president until now. I get it. She would have had to reveal his connection with John. I brought a bouquet of lime lilies. So that he would understand I truly knew know about Amy. Oops, that was start. Those flowers are a dear memory up to the president and Amy. The first present she received from the president was a bouquet of lion lilies. But now, even he has passed away. If only he were still alive. Perhaps I could have introduced him to John. Shifu! I'm sorry to interrupt this atmosphere, but there's something I need to say. Oh, what is it now? Can't this wait? Well, actually, there's one last item that's been delivered here from, Jing from Sheng Fa. I have here the President's Will. What? What the fuck? What the fuck? The president's will. My old man received a great number of special medals from the president himself. As a token of his trust, the president left his will in the protection of the Lan Clan. Those medals and that will, they were the pride of our clan. A family treasure, so to speak. That's not the will, that's Lang Shi's scroll. Yeah, this is... Agent Lang, does that will have something to do with the current... Uh, with, the, with the current case? You bet it does. It says here... I hereby acknowledge John Marsh as my own son. What? John Sam is in the president's will? So he knew. Are you certain that w that will was written by the president? Yeah, he entrusted it to the land clan even before the SS5 incident took place. Then what the fuck? They'll have to appraise it back home, but my name of the but by the name of the land clan, this is the real deal. Dijon Huang was the president of an entire nation. The existence of his son would have caused considerable contro controversy. However, he left behind a will just in case. This makes it double, doubly sure. I still can't believe it myself, but there's no room for doubt. John Marsh, you are the son of Dijun Huang, president of Zheng Fa. John! Okay, then who is the kidnapper? And the president is probably actually dead. So all my assumptions are wrong, except very likely the one that Delisha is behind all of this. John! Loft. To be continued. Okay, Neo, how long is the next part? Oh.
Oh, okay, yeah, then there's no time to do it now. <sighs> Dang it, because I really don't want to know how this finishes. We'll see when I play again. But yeah, wow, that was something. <laughs> oh boy. But yep, see you next time for, I presume, the last or second to last part? Possibly both of them? I don't know how many parts are left. <sighs> Bye.